so here we are on a uh, late afternoon, <laughs> early evening. Not cold ish, but rainy ish, dreary day in October um, in southern Virginia, South Hill, my hometown, and on the farm here that my parents have. And I've been, they've owned this place since I was in high school. Actually, we have my grandparents' land too, but. Anyways, these trees that I'm standing by grow pretty abundantly in this region, especially in these higher and drier places. Although everywhere is pretty wet here, but here in the specific, it's pretty sunny and hot and dry compared to other areas here. So this is Junipers virginiana. It's the Eastern red cedar and it's actually not a cedar. There's really no true cedars in the continental United States or, or North America so-called North America. Um, the true cedar is an, actually a species in Europe and so when colonizers came here and they were naming plants they called things that, that look like the cedar that they recognized cedar. So there's a lot of mix-up sometimes around what cedar and what isn't and people argue about it or whatever. And people call the cedar here but the same genus that grows in the southwest people call juniper. So but there's actually a few other plants like there's something called Atlantic white cedar that's not in the same genus but it's also called a cedar anyways just a common name thing but junipers one of the things that's a characteristic of them is that their needles and I don't remember all the exact botanical terminology at this moment but I kind of looked in deep into it at one point it's more of a rounded it's so it's in the cypress family and some members in the cypress family have flat, flattened needles with divisions, and some have more of a rounded needle structure, and junipers usually have that. And I would say that um, the thujas, which in this region of the south, oh, there's a crane flying by, how beautiful. In this region of the south, um, thujas, or the cedars that my dad is a horticulturalist and he actually just plants those ornamentally and they are just planted. They have the flat needles. They don't live that long here, but in the Pacific Northwest, Thuja placata is the western red cedar, even though the eastern red cedar and western red cedar are not, they're in the same family, but they're not in the same genus, but they're both called cedars. So just to say that, but the say the juniper, yeah, the juniper of the southwest and in the Rockies and Kansas, all the cedars that grow, you know, in the Midwest and into the mountains are pretty much this related to this species, juniper, junipers virginiana. So another thing about why there's so many of these around here is because of fire suppression and they are, if a fire did roll through here, the junipers would definitely make things catch on fire more but you know this region in specific was once more of a pine prairie type ecology and yeah you know, fires were a regular thing and there was a tall pine forest usually it was very mixed like and because of the glacial like this area wasn't glaciated but because of glaciation coming near here it pushed a certain amount of species to this area. There's even spruce forests and stuff here, which is more of a northern ecology. There was like a lot of mixed up, mixed things here. And since fire suppression has started, which really has only been the past, well in this area, like four, 500 years, um, it just really changed the landscape. And then farming, mass, huge modern crop farming, and not thinking ecologically about the farming because native folks also farmed as well as colonizers but in a different kind of way and so fire just doesn't make sense in this private land thing that we do you know um because people are afraid of the buildings catching on fire whatever there's so many reasons why people don't want to light fires but this tree has thrived because of no fire and and other reasons too but and it's a great tree you know in a lot of ways it's a really good wood people make fences out of it my grandpa's farm is has fence posts that have been there his whole life been there his whole life and they've not rotted so it's really great for that and it's rot resistant it's like you make a make stuff out of it 
for your house and it kind of sort of not as moldy and not as buggy because of that anyways so also something about this tree let's see what is really cool to see right now is there's something this little parasite right here is the cedar apple rust and the orchard that's right over there the apple orchard is suffering because of it it's just a I guess it's is it a fungus or is it a parasite I should know this I think it's a parasite it's a parasite there's a bug I'll double check on that but here's another one they're just huge I don't know I wish there's wonder if there's some sort of craft I could do with these um, yeah they're all over these trees and it makes it hard to have apple trees here I don't I it, I think it might hit other mem members of the rose family especially cultivated members